Uh, good morning. I'm uh, Jim Fike. I'm the chairman of the International Committee. It's my great honor this morning to uh, introduce our next speaker, Colonel Pierre Nerinx. He's the Deputy Secretary General for the International Committee on Military Medicine. And this morning, as we transition from some Ebola virus disease specific discussions to the larger topic of interoperability amongst our international military and medical communities, the role of the International Committee on Military Medicine and their decades of work in interoperability are very well positioned. Colonel Narenx uh, graduated from the Catholic University of uh, Louvain in 1987 and uh, had several years as a medical officer, including deployments to Rwanda, to Romania, Democratic Republic of Congo, Afghanistan. He specialized in emergency medicine in 1983 and in the years since then within the Belgian Mil uh, Medical Service has had several posts including running emergency departments, working within the educational and training commands, and he's been a hospital commander both at Garrison and at several different deployed locations. He's currently the director of the Queen Astrid Military Hospital. He's also the Belgian representative to the NATO Scientific and Technology Committee's um, Human Factors and Medicine Panel. And uh, it's, again, it's my pleasure to introduce Colonel Narex. Thank you, Jim. Admiral Generals, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak in this conference. Almost one century of international cooperation in military medicine. That's something I will explain you in a few words due to the time schedule. Um, what is ICMM and uh, is there a place for interoperability concept which is our framework? Let's go back to the past. Um, that's the reason why I'm very proud to be here tonight, today um, because in 1920, after the First World War, two surgeons, one coming from Belgium and one from the USA, were speaking during this 28th session of the AMSIS meeting. And they decided that they had to do something because what they saw during the war was so awful that they had to do something on an international point of view. That's the reason why Bainbridge wrote in The Military Surgeon that in order to obtain the greatest benefit of the medical and surgical lessons of the war, it would be necessary to collect, compare, standardize, and the results of the experience of every nation that had been engaged in the conflict. That's why they succeeded to convince our royal family in Brussels to establish one international forum to discuss. And they convinced eight nations uh, to be part of the founding members of the permanent committee of the international, international congresses of military medicine and pharmacy. These countries were Belgium, Brazil, France, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. Eight nations in 1921, and today I'm proud to say that we are 110 nations participating in the discussions of the committee. Um, we are recognized as an organization, an international organization, where uh, specialized in the, the military medical affairs, and we are recognized by the IOs, such as WHO, the International Committee of the Red Cross, the World Organization for Animal Health, and recently by UNAIDS. Our scope and goals are the following. We want to maintain and to reinforce the bonds between all medical services all over the world, and to promote the medical military scientific activities. The spectrum, I do not go into the details due to the time schedule, and I can assure you that we are speaking about medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, and vet problems. Our vision, and that's the vision of our founding fathers, is that we have to be a neutral place and we have to be impartial. During our meeting, there is no place for discussion about politics, 
philosophy, culture, or religion. We are an intergovernmental organization represented by our Surgeon Generals, and it's quite pleasant to see that in uniform, Surgeon Generals of all over the world are discussing during one week on medical topics without any consideration for the daily geo geopolitical situation. So ICMM must be the place for facilitating the contacts and the forum for convergence. Very quickly on our structure, since 1921, the seat of ICMM is located in Belgium, and we are functioning mainly with the biggest body of our committee, which is the Scientific Council. We have one board composed by the Surgeon Generals uh, coming from the nations organizing the Congresses. And since one decade, uh, we decided to more focus on, to have more focus on the regional problematics, which are organized in six regions, such as the Pan-African Regional Working Group, the Pan-American, the Pan-Arab, the Pan-Asia Pacific, the Maghreb, and the Europeans. All the chairmen of those regional working groups are composing the international working group, which is giving advice and commands to the General Assembly where all the Surgeon Generals are voting the position of the ICMM. I told you that we are organizing mainly scientific activities. We do not speak about anything else um, than a scientific session during the World Congress or the Regional Congress, and we are also organizing international courses. The main important ones are organized in Switzerland, uh, for the course on Law on Armed Conflicts, the course and the workshop on military medical ethics. South Africa is organizing the course for the veter veterinarians. And Tunisia is, as an example, Tunisia is organizing the course on military medical support in desert operations. We are publishing a review, a quarterly review, um, mainly in English and in French, and um, I do not go. Thank you all for being back. And uh, I promise to be short, uh, so allow me to finish my presentation. When the ICMM was speaking about the interoperability, um, we had the big discussions and the problem we identified, may I have the next slide, please? Is what do we, how do we define interoperability? And when you are reading different definitions, it's a question of acting together in order to achieve common objectives. Our question within our committee was to, is that feasible? and applicable for 110 nations. And as we consider that interoperability is the top of the pyramid, um, which are the fundamentals of interoperability, so that's the reason why we recommend our member states to focus on the, basic, on the basis of common understanding of health in military environment. And that's the reason why we are focusing on five topics. The ICMM wants to promote First of all, the quality of care, before, during, and after the mission. We want to promote the access to medical education. That's not necessarily the case in all over the world. We want to promote the regional cooperation between health partners, civilian and militaries. We want to be better in the integration of new global health challenges. And last but not least, the principles of military medical ethics have to be fine-tuned. Let's go very quickly through all those points. The challenges we are facing concerning the quality of care is that all over the world there are different approaches based on national policies. Okay, we have to accept that, but we remark that evidence-based medicine principles are not necessarily universal. That's the reason why we are asking our nations and our member states to introduce EBM discussions by each 
of the scientific activities. The medical education of military healthcare providers are not necessarily um, common in all, uh, in, in all the world. That's the reason why we want to emphasize the need to target the young generations. Um, all the, the old colonels are very clever, but the problem is that when we are organizing a course, we do not necessarily want to teach the colonels, but we want to teach the captains and the lieutenants. There is a need for a scientific validation of the courses, and we have also to look for the better access to courses by some of our colleagues all over the world. They may not attend, uh, long pay long for long trips or uh, attend congresses with high prices. That's the reason why we want to stimulate our regional working groups and the nation to organize themselves into national courses locally for some of the region, in, in the region of the world. The partners uh, and the cooperation with partners, um, we remarked that in uh, an environment, environment with different policies, um, when there, there are strong national policies and guidelines, there is on the diplomatic side very little room for convergence. And on the other side of the spectrum, when there are no policy, we are facing enormous threats and the crisis we are living today is uh, one of those. That's the reason why we ask the international organizations directors to improve the connection with the medical, uh, military services uh, all over the world just to help some of our countries and our member states to develop stronger civilian and military policies, but not necessarily as strong as we need to have. But the, the promise is always to find the, the best common solution for every nation. We are, since centuries, we are convinced that DNBIs are the most, uh, the, the most challenging issue in our military medicine uh, work. We are convinced that the globalization, and we are seeing the emerging, uh, the emerging health risks uh, growing. We are all deploying in endemic areas, and we see that imported and exported infection by the deployed troops is a problem. That's the reason why we are promoting the International Health Regulation 2005 and public health in every scientific activities of the ICN. As I said, last but not least, the principle of military medical ethics is something we have to think about. We need to develop a global understanding of medical ethics within the military, and we have to develop one educational and common educational program for our, our provide healthcare providers. That's the reason why we are closely cooperating in these last months with the RCRC. Uh, RCRC uh, is producing a very huge program. You probably heard about healthcare in danger. And if not, I recommend you to have a look on their website. It's a very huge program. Also providing everyone an e-learning platform on the law of armed conflicts on the military medical ethics. Let's me allow me to conclude this short presentation, this uh, very short presentation on ICMM. ICMM is a neutral and impartial organization for military and medical services. We want to promote information exchange and stimulate debates by developing only scientific activities. ICMM is not functioning as a decision-making body, but is acting as facilitator and an interface. Let's speak of, let's allow me to dare to speak about the military medical diplomacy, and that's the role of ICMM. I thank you.